Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be trying on all of my designer shoes. I have 24 pairs and that includes flats, heels, loafers, tall boots, short boots, booties, basically everything. And I'll also be sharing with you guys whether I find them comfortable and if I would recommend them or not. And I also have a shoe hack that I use for all of these shoes, which is gonna save you a lot of money. It's a hack that I use to protect the soles without going to the cobbler. So there's a lot of information in this video, so make sure you stay tuned. And without further ado, let's get started. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Jane. I make videos on fashion, luxury, and mindful shopping. I upload every Friday, so make sure if you like any of my videos, give it a thumbs up or a subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any of the videos. Okay, so let's talk about the shoe hack first. So with all of my designer shoes, so the moment that I buy it and bring it back home, I automatically put on my own sole protectors. And these are actually a 3M shower treading tape that you can buy from Amazon. But basically it's these strips of tape that you can tape right onto your shoes and you can do this with all of your designer shoes and it's a very cheap way instead of going to the cobbler, getting a new sole put on because a lot of these designer shoes, the bottom is in leather which will peel and get ruined really quickly. So putting on rubber soles would be a great way to protect your shoes. But let's be honest, who's going to spend an extra 20 to 40 to $50 on every single pair of shoes that we buy? right before we wear them, right? So this is a really fast and effective way and a cheap way to protect all the soles of your shoes for a fraction of the price. And the best part about these tapes is that when you remove them, it does not damage the actual soles of the shoes. So for example here, let's remove this Louboutin tape together just to see what's gonna happen when you remove it. So I will just peel this right off. And what's great about this is that once the soles get really dirty, sometimes there's rocks that get in and get stuck that can really damage your shoes. You can actually change out the tape and replace it with new ones. So you'll forever have pristine soles that will be untouched. And as you can see here, I'm peeling the tape right off of my Louboutins and there's no damage to the paint underneath. All right, no more rambling, let's get into the shoes. Okay, so I've divided the video up in terms of categories of shoes and we'll be talking about all my shoes in the different categories. So let's start out with flats. So my personal favorite flats are these Ferragamo Vera flats. And I find them to be quite comfortable, even more so than the Verena, which is the completely flat ballerina flats. So these ones with a little bit of heel actually makes the shoe a little bit more comfortable because it allows your feet to be a little bit more in the natural arc. So I own probably way too many pairs of these Vera flats. These, this was my first ever pair and it's in this nude and black patent leather. And patent leather is great because you can wear them all season long and with all weather. You don't have to worry about rain or snow because they're a lot more durable and can be wiped off. So these are pretty comfortable. And then I also have a pair of just brown calfskin Vera flats. And these ones are even more comfortable because it's in a soft calfskin, whereas the pattern can be a little bit tight and it's not gonna stretch as much. So these are personally the most comfortable ones that I have. And I would recommend these smooth leather versions over the patent leather because they are more comfortable. All right, and then I also have another pair and this one is i actually bought this on ebay because i think there was a event with ferragamo like many many years ago where you can design your own vera flats and i missed that event but i found this pair on ebay and i just think the blue and the lavender just matches so well it's almost like a little special order vera flats so i really love them because of how much they pop and the two-tone color is just very unique this is again in the patent leather and this is actually a little bit of a size up from my other ones which of course is gonna make it more comfortable so I love these as well so would I recommend the Ferragamo Vera flats I would say absolutely and I find them quite comfortable and these are my go-to summer or spring flat shoes all right so now let's move on to loafers so I only have two pairs of loafers this is my first one so this is the Dahlia loafers from Hermes and I purchased this in Paris I've also talked about in my previous video of what I got in Paris so I've worn these loafers and they're in the very soft chev leather with this Chandonc motif 
So I find these shoes very comfortable. They do mold to your feet. You can see all the wrinkles that's formed after just one wear. And that actually shows that the leather is soft, which will be good because you know that it will be more comfortable. So I would absolutely recommend this pair of loafers. And I just find that the gold color, the gold or the brown color is very easy to match with a lot of outfits as well. So my second pair of loafers is again from Hermes. And this is, I think the Paris loafers, but I could be wrong. I'll link everything down in the description box below. But what I love about this pair of loafers is it's white with brown and it's got rose gold hardware and this beautiful yellow pop of color on the interior. So this pair of shoes is quite comfortable as well. Not sure what leather this is, but it's also quite wrinkly. So that shows that it is a softer leather, which will be more comfortable. And it's got a little tiny block heel, which is perfect. So both of those loafers, I love, 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 and I would recommend both of them. Oh man, I almost forgot about my sandals. So I've got my Hermes Aloha sandals here and my Hermes Oasis sandals here. I've already talked about these Aloha sandals in my previous video of my best and worst. And uh, let's just cut to the chase. This pair, not comfortable because the rubber right here, especially along the, uh, the front part of the shoe, it really cuts into your skin as you're walking. So I would only wear this on the beach briefly, not for daytime walking. All right, so as for the Hermes Oasis sandals, I got mine in the white calf skin. And I find that these shoes, the first two times or three times that I wore them, it did give me blisters and it does require quite a bit of break-in period I find but as you wear them more and more the leather does soften up and it does become more comfortable over time so now as I'm wearing them they are comfortable enough to be a daytime shoe but once again I still wouldn't wear them for too long but I would say this is a moderately comfortable shoe it's a great summertime shoe okay so my last pair of flat shoes is probably this recent pair that I got, which is a mule. So this is the Esme mule from Hermes. And again, it's in the exact same leather as the loafers, which is in the soft chev leather. And this pair of shoes you can see is a lot wider, which means that it hopefully it will be more comfortable. I haven't worn this pair yet because of the leather. I feel like they will be just as comfortable as the loafers. So for the loafers that I had from Hermes, you do have to size down. So a lot of my Hermes shoes are actually in a size size eight and a half for boots and sometimes an eight for loafers or other shoes but these Dahlia loafers I actually had to get it in a size I think a seven so you do have to size down for these so for meals I would recommend sizing up because you don't want your toes to be jammed up in this toe box and the natural position it will be a little bit further back as you're walking and you want to have enough length to accommodate it so that way your heel is not just hanging off and kind of hanging off the side and it doesn't look as good and it's not going to be as comfortable so because they're more like a slipper I think sizing up would increase the comfort all right so now let's talk about the in-between shoes between flats and heels so I have two pairs of these Chanel slingbacks so this I still think is a very walkable height and it's a little bit more dressy so you can dress it up more and you can also dress it down I find these very versatile so of course this is the classic Chanel slingback and I do find them to be more comfortable. This one is actually in a 38 C and I think C means that it's wider. This definitely feels wider than their standard Chanel slingbacks. And I find them to be a lot more comfortable if you have wider feet as well. And I have the gray ones that I bought actually pre-loved because I really love the gray and the black contrast. I think the black is in a velvet fabric and this gray is either in a tweed or some sort of, um, some sort of a fabric. They're just classic, right? A classic pair of Chanel shoes and they are quite comfortable. So I would recommend them as they are very ladylike. So the last pair of transition shoes would be this, also this pair of Hermes mules that I picked up in Paris. So this pair is really special to me because of this beautiful architectural heel. So this is a very unique design by Hermes and this entire thing is actually made of glass. So it's actually got quite a bit of weight and I think that these shoes are just like a work of art. I do find that mules that have a little bit of a heel are not as comfortable. When there's a backing to the shoe, your feet have support in the back. Whereas the mules, all of the pressure of your feet are gonna be in this toe box area. So you're using solely the front of your feet to lift up the entire shoe. And when there is a heel, your entire foot is gonna slide down and there's gonna be more force in that toe box. So these are beautiful and they do feel comfortable even though I haven't worn them yet, but I can see them as being not as comfortable as if say, 
the shoes with more support and coverage all the way around. Okay guys, so now let's go into high heels. So I've talked about a lot of these heels in my comfortable designer heels video. So I'm gonna just go through this section really quickly and I'll spend more time on the pairs of shoes that I have not talked about in that video. So now the next level up is the 85 millimeter heels. So I only have two pairs of those. The first one is my Chanel heels with the pearl detail in the back. So as you can see again with the wrinkling, it is a very soft leather and this pair of shoes is, feels very cushioned and very comfortable. So I would recommend Chanel shoes as well. And my second pair of 85 millimeter pumps are these Christian Louboutin Corneal pumps. They've got a very interesting toe design and you can see more toe cleavage in this, in this shoe. And also the toe box is quite wide so it does make the shoe more comfortable as well. So these are my recommended Christian Louboutin pumps that are actually comfortable and are more for wider feet. Let's talk about these Valentino Rock Studs. So, I mean, I've already talked about these shoes a lot. So this pair of Valentino Rock Studs is actually in a four inch heel and it's in patent leather, which are all things that you would think would not be comfortable. I think what makes these shoes really comfortable is that the, the toe box is quite wide, which accommodates for people with wider feet. A little bit more embellished shoes, it's harder to wear them because it's gonna be trying to fight for attention with the rest of your outfit. So it's not as easy to wear as say my next pair, which is these classic Manolo Blahnik BB pumps. And I think this pair is probably a staple in any woman's wardrobe. I absolutely recommend the BB pumps because I think they're just so, they're so simple, but yet they're so classic at the same time. And this pair of BB pumps, it's in the 100 millimeter heel height in this beautiful electric blue suede. I think Manolo Blahnik shoes are quite comfortable. I really like, you can see that this, the classic Manolo Blahnik heel for the BB is this almost like a square french fry heel. In the 100 millimeter heel height though, and because I am now over 30, anything really, <laughs> with a heel height of taller than 85 or even 70 millimeters is starting to get really uncomfortable. So would I say they're super uncomfortable? No, but are they the most comfortable things? Probably not. All right, and the third pair of high heels I have is these Gianvito Rossi 100 millimeter plexi pumps. And I know you're probably thinking like, what the heck is going on in there? Well, that's a great question. I've actually talked about this again in my designer heel video, but this is kind of like a, this is a foot pedal that I've cut up because I do not want additional space to be taken up in the toe box because it's already pretty small and constricted. Otherwise, it put a lot more pressure on your feet. So that's why it looks kind of like dog chewed up my shoes, but it's there for a reason, I promise. I would say these shoes are good if you wanna see a little bit of toe cleavage. If you don't really wanna see that much of your toes, then probably avoid these because you do see you know, funky things going on because of the plexis. But I think these are just beautiful and it really elongates your legs because of that pointy toe. So this pair of strappy sandals from Sturt Weitzman I've not talked about yet. So I think this is called the nudist sandals. I believe mine is in the 85 millimeter heel height. Let me see here. Oh, nope, I'm wrong. I guess I bought it in the 100 millimeter heel height. Okay. All right, so these are my nudist sandals in the 100 millimeter heel height. Um, why did I buy them in 100 millimeters? Okay, anyway, so these shoes I think are great for those occasions where you're wearing a really long dress and you don't want a closed toe shoe. So these shoes are gonna make your legs look like they go on for miles and miles. And I think Jennifer Aniston loves wearing these and they look great on her. So these are really great. And because of the minimalistic design, the very thin straps and the nude color, it really does really elongate your legs. And in the, I guess, four inch heel height that I now realize. These shoes though, Stuart Weitzman is also known for making very comfortable shoes, but these nudist, sandals are not it so i have tried these in the 85 millimeter heel height and i think they are slightly more comfortable but like the 100s 
it's not the most comfortable because as you like just imagine right where you're walking the only thing that's supporting your foot is this tiny tiny little strap and this tiny tiny little ankle strap so it's not a lot of uh, resistance and it's not a lot of support for your feet they are very very beautiful and they go with all sorts of outfits and I mean for the leg elongation effect you can't beat these shoes but are they comfortable no <laughs> and would I recommend them um, if you're like a beauty is paying kind of girl then yes or if you really just want to wear them for a short amount of time if you know you're going to an event where you're mostly sitting most of the time then absolutely but if you're gonna be walking then do not buy these shoes Okay, sorry I lied. There's actually a third pair of 85 millimeter heels that I own, and these are from Ferragamo. So I bought these quite a few years ago, and I love them because of the mosaic pattern that's on the bow, as well as this beautiful heel. And it's more of a block heel, so I thought that they would be more, they can be dressed down a little bit too and be worn more casually. And it's in this beautiful black suede, which does stretch a little bit more over time too. So at the time, they were very comfortable, but I think I bought them in a size slightly too small. But of course, when you're wearing the heel, you don't want your heel to be slipping out as you're walking. But at the same time, I don't know if it's maybe just the arc of the shoes, but I just feel like my toes just really get jammed up in the toe box. So, and it felt really constricting. So I don't know. I just feel like these pair of shoes are slightly too small for me and it's a little uncomfortable to walk in these. All right, now let's talk about booties and boots. So my first pair of designer booties would be this Stuart Weitzman Juliana booties. So this is in a slight, I think it's a 60 centimeter heel height. It's in a block heel as well and in this beautiful almond toe. And it's more of like a sock booty. So I've worn this booty to death and I love it so much. It's so comfortable. The sock boots really fits well against your calves and against your ankles. It just elongates your legs without that little jarring horizontal line that comes out with wider booties. And with this heel height, it is very walkable. And Stuart Weissman boots are supposed to be known for being comfortable and these booties are no exception. Love these and wore them to death. My second and last pair of designer booties are these Christian Louboutin, I think they're called the Cavill booties. So once again, this was purchased a couple years ago. As you can see from the wrapping paper, I have not yet worn them. When I saw these booties, I absolutely fell in love just because it's such a beautiful and unique design. Sorry, there's more cat hair. If you own a cat and you own black suede shoes, you'll feel my pain. But anyway, so these boots, I love the military vibes that this booty gives with these gold embellishment buttons. And there's this tie that you can actually remove. So I removed the tie from the closest to the toe box to kind of let it expand more and be more comfortable. It's in this in this taller heel height, although it's not uncomfortable. I tend to opt for only chunkier heels for my booties because I do find them a lot more comfortable than of course stilettos, duh, no brainer, right? And of course, can't beat that beautiful pop of red, right? The only problem with these booties and the reason why I haven't worn them as much is because they're kind of like a statement shoe. They're not just your typical black booties you can just throw on and go and it'll go along with everything because it would just be kind of in the background. This pair of shoes like deserves its own red carpet. You know what I mean? Like when you wear these shoes, this has to be the statement or it will kind of overpower your outfit in a sense. So if you wear anything that has more accents in your outfits or things that pop out, this will be fighting for attention. So that's why I feel like if I were to wear this, I would have to almost dress in more basic things, um, things that are toned down a little bit more so that way I can let these booties shine. Also the military vibe, even though it looks very cool, I don't know if kind of like rocker enough or kind of like cool enough to pull this off as it's not my like typical style. And with these boots, I did end up going to the cobbler and adding these uh, rubber soles on there because with booties and boots, you know that in the winter time, you're gonna be wearing them with rain and snow and slush. And even though the stick-ons are good, I would not really walk too much in snow and rain with those. So nothing's better than a uh, rubber sole. All right, so the next pair, we're going into the taller boot categories. So my designer tall boots, I only own, I only have one pair and it's from Hermes because the reason I don't own a lot of designer, I would say designer tall boots or boots that are gonna get more wear in the winter time is because designer things are expensive, right? What I used to do 
in my younger days because boots are like an absolute and essential piece in my wardrobe, especially in Canada. So I basically wear boots exclusively in the winter time. Um, and it, there's a lot of salt, a lot of slush, a lot of snow and things that can damage the leather. So what I would use to do is I would have a pair of sacrifice boots that I would wear for an entire winter. And then by the end of the winter, we'll have a lot of salt stains and a lot of, you know, just in bad shape. And then that would be a cheaper pair of boots that I would just wear all the time. Um, and then next season I would get like a new pair. Um, so that's why for, if I'm going to buy like a designer pair of boots, I really don't want to ruin them because they're so expensive, right? So I probably won't wear this, say like in the winter time with all the salt and slush. I probably wear this in like a nice fall day or with like a trench coat or on days where the weather is not as harsh, you know, with just some like sunny days or maybe just like very light rain. I would definitely not put this boot through the ringer because I don't want to throw my money away, you know? So that's why this is my only pair of designer tall boots. And it is beautiful. And it's in this beautiful, I like, want to say almost like a perennial leather. And I have styled these boots exclusively in my how to style knee high boots video. And I'll link it up above if you're interested in that. But I love these boots. They are a little bit wider though. So you can see that the, the opening is quite wide and the shaft of the boots it's actually quite tall as well. So if you do have shorter legs, um, these can actually go all the way up to your knee. So for me personally, this actually ends right below my kneecap, which is pretty high for a knee high boot. Also because of the wider opening, if you have very thin legs, um, unless you like that oversized boot look, which I, I do like it. I think it looks really cool. Um, if you want something that's very form fitting, then maybe these boots aren't, oh my God, I almost dropped them. Then almost, then these boots might not be for you. And I would recommend them because they're very comfortable. But Hermes boots, I do realize their shoes and their toe boxes are quite narrow. So you might have to size up for the boots. And I did, and I honestly think that for boots, you should size up because it's okay if your feet are swimming around in the boots since you'll most likely have socks. Uh, you can adjust the sock thickness so you can make it less um, roomy in there. But the more room you have, the more comfortable the boots are. You don't want your boots to be super tight. Boots are one of those things where you want to size up. So my Hermes boots, everybody. Okay, and now let's talk about over the knee boots. All right, my favorite. So I own four pairs of over the knee boots. And again, I have done a Stuart Weitzman over the knee boots review, and I'll link that up above as well. So my first pair are these Stuart Weitzman Lowland boots, and this is in the gray suede. So of course, what I love about all Stuart Weitzman boots and over the knee boots is they're gonna be this thinnest calf circumference and the thinnest shaft which is great for you know those of us with very slim legs or if you like over the knee boots with a very tight fit then definitely look into Stuart Weitzman over the knee boots that's probably the biggest perk that they've got for them also they are quite comfortable the thing I don't like and I've mentioned this in my other video as well is that these ties they come loose all the time so you can tie them up but then as you're walking it would just end up becoming open and Free with the wind so that's kind of annoying but other than that again I had some color transfer issues with some of the suede on the inside if you're wearing like lighter jeans might want to be careful of that and then I have two pairs of the Thailand boots one in this beautiful walnut almost like a brown cognac color and it's got a little bit of a heel for the Thailand I love this pair because brown is just beautiful. It goes with everything in the fall. It's got a lot of brown jackets as well, but again, color transfer issues with this. And even though it's got these suede ties, which I think they changed from the nylon ties, even these suede ties, first of all, they color transfer. And also they still unravel throughout the days. So it's a little bit better, but still not staying puts the way that it should. This is my second pair of Thailand boots and this is of course in the classic black. This heel height is very walkable so I think you can dress it up and down. All right, so my last and final over the knee boots is this pair of Stuart Weitzman. I think it's a Zuzana boots. So these are the over the knee boots high heel version and I got this from the Nordstrom sale I think in 2020 and they were marked down like 40% and I love this taupe color but the thing that I love the most is that it's in leather. So 
very rarely will you find a store at Weizmann over the knee boots and leather. Most of their boots are in suede. And I actually prefer leather because they're a lot easier to manage and clean in the winter time. Because suede, you know that if you get hand sanitizer on it or if you put water on it, it will kill the suede and make it harden. Whereas leather is a lot easier to work with. The thing is, the reason I don't want to buy like a black leather pair of over the knee boots is because it can look a little bit risque, like pretty woman, right? So that's why with the taupe color, I think it just makes it tone down a little bit more, look a little bit more neutral and less kind of like a, um, like a sexy vibe. So that's why I opted for this pair of boots and the heel height is a little bit taller than the Thailand's, but they are pretty comfortable because once again, it's in a block heel and it's in an almond toe. So these I don't really wear as much because the higher the heel, the harder it is to dress down. All right guys, so that's it for my designer shoe collection. Oh my gosh, I'm tired. So if you like that video, please give it a thumbs up. Please tell me what your favorite shoes are in the comment section down below. If you have any other questions as well, please leave me a comment. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.